Thank you, Janae and Ms. Frankie, and hello, everyone. In a year that has already been tough for so many, we unfortunately had to deal with another great loss this year with the news last month of Douglas Anchor's passing. Douglas Anchor was a bartender, a businessman, an author, a force of nature. He was a proud father and a loyal friend. His sudden passing came as a shock to many of us and he will be dearly missed. The pain of his passing will soften, but his memory will live on. One of what the ways that we thought fitting to honor that memory was to do something that we haven't done before, which is to award two Lifetime Achievement Awards this year. Douglas's impact on our industry and his achievements were so great and so widely influential that we felt he was a worthy recipient of the Helen David Lifetime Achievement Award. Today we want to recognize his extraordinary achievements as a man who leaves behind a legacy of great and wildly popular cocktails, pioneering bars, and above all, a generation of bartenders who he trained and mentored to go on and have their own extraordinary and thriving careers in this amazing industry. To help explain the many achievements and the impact of Douglas, I want to introduce a close friend of his, Colin Asari Appiah. Thank you, Jake Hill. Doug and I met at college together as teenagers, where we bonded over our Ghanaian heritage and our love for the hospitality industry. Doug started as a bar back at a Hard Rock Cafe, and like most of us, he entered the industry by mistake. He went on to work at other venues, such as Smolensky's and Planet Hollywood. He took the knowledge he had acquired and took over the helm at the iconic Dick's Bar at Atlantic, where we used to go and drink with him often. From here, Doug went on to create the London Academy of Bartending with myself, Richard Hargroves, Andrew Chansing, and Alex Turner. It was one of the very first training schools that taught contemporary cocktails to bartenders who wanted to treat it as a serious career and was used as a conduit for spirits brands who wished to communicate with the operators of the new era of style bars in London town. The success of the bar school led Doug, Rich and Alex to found Lab Bar in London Soho, which was backed by a good friend, Philip Gusson. It mixed the speed principles of the 90s bar groups with a contemporary approach to drinks and a love of exotic, fresh ingredients, premium brands, flamboyant garnishes, and borderline unhealthy amounts of vanilla sugar. It was in everything, vanilla sugar everywhere. The drinks were fun yet sophisticated, the bartender skilled, and the atmosphere energetic. The bar and its drinks were widely imitated even by people who had never been there. Douglas's bar became the unofficial meeting place for the drinks industry, whether based in London or from further afield. If you wanted to meet anyone in a business in those days, your best bet was to go and have a drink at a lab. It was like towels, but less sweaty, except everyone was drinking vodka and a lot of it. But it went beyond lab. In 2002, Doug opened the townhouse, broadening his appeal to a totally different audience in the upscale Knightsbridge neighborhood. It's here that his most famous cocktail was born, the porn star Martini. Doug understood how to please his audience. And with his crowd pleasing blend of vanilla vodka, passion fruit and champagne, it became a staple order in lab and townhouse and in bars across the country and around the world. Doug likes to joke that his cocktail was paying the rent of countless bars he'd never been to. And 20 years on, it's still more popular than ever. Its provocative name and approachable flavor also made it a bit of a gateway cocktail, encouraging a generation of people to try a cocktail on a Friday night, perhaps for the first time, and from there to become cocktail lovers themselves. In this way, his legacy is almost beyond measure. Douglas alumni went on to become bar owners, brand ambassadors, and even brand owners, taking the gospel of modern cocktails and bartending as a career around the world. Myself, Jamie Terrell, John Kukuru, Dimi Lazinska, Dre Masso, Andrea Montague, Jack Hubbard, Jamie Gordon, and Jamie Evans, Bex Armfitz, Ross Simon, Tim Stones, and many more. If you went to a bar train in the UK or Europe, even in the early noughts, there was a strong chance that Doug had trained some of those people. Doug was a pioneer in taking cocktail training and consultancy to the world, often beyond the obvious cocktail capitals. For example, Lab in Cape Town in South Africa shaped the way people drank cocktails 
on the African continent. He also trained bartenders in Asia, elevating the nascent bar scenes there. Doug was a visionary in the cocktail business with a clear vision of how he wanted to monetize his most famous creation, the porn star martini. Douglas was always ahead of the trend. We stand on the shoulders of giants and Doug, we all stand on your shoulders, bro. Thank you for inspiring and challenging us to take this industry to the next level. We'll carry on the torch. Now here are a few words from some other people that knew him well. Douglas was one of the most driven people I have ever had the pleasure of meeting. Doug is an utterly unique character. His mind was bubbling over with creativity and ideas. Every single time you spoke to him, you knew that not only was he focused on you, he was focused on 15 different th weird and wonderful things. And it was like a Willy Wonka's playground in his mind. He had an energy about him and a determination that things were going to be big, buzzy, brilliant, and that went back from bars, it went through to when he had brands. He just was a complete force of nature. He was a larger than life character. He was 100% himself. He marched to the beat of his own drum. A really interesting, complex individual. Douglas is best known for those times in Soho and the incredible legacy that came from Loud Bar. There was no other bar like that at the time, like not even close to being like that at the time. Lab stands for London Academy of Bartenders. Not only was it an awesome cocktail bar, Douglas had set Lab up to educate, not just bartenders, but consumers alike. Lab Bar was just the most fun and the most wild. It wasn't a gay bar, it wasn't a straight bar, it was a bar for everyone. Everyone was welcome and it was a party every night of the week. Everyone was so proud to work there and everyone knew that they were working for somewhere really special. The mark that Lab has left on the global bartending community is unmatched. You only need to look at the ex-team members of Lab and see what they're all up to these days. They are changing what's possible with a cocktail. Lab Bar was an enormous, enormous influence on the London cocktail scene. Townhouse opened in 2002, I think it was. Townhouse certainly had a refinement that, that Soho didn't require. Townhouse was like a little bit more fabulous. It was a stunning little bar in Knightsbridge. It was tight in there, you know, it, it was small, but it was really pretty. The drinks were amazing and the bar team was one of the best bar teams I've ever had the pleasure of sitting across a bar from. Those drinks that came out of there that became famous and I think we probably all know which the most famous was, but really visible, naughty names, really fun. They were, the, they were the point at which consumers kind of thought, cocktails are really, really fun. This is a really fun night out. He was a visionary. He saw something that no one else did or could, and he brought it to life. You cannot say Douglas's name without immediately thinking of the porn star martini. The genius of the porn star martini was it appealed to everyone. It is fruity, it's easy drinking, it's that pick me up. It's also got this theatre, and if you, if you know Doug and any of the drinks that he created, there was always, always a theatre to them. It was lots of vanilla sugar, lots of passion fruit puree, vanilla vodka, and that was shaken up and served straight up in a cocktail glass with a side shot of sparkling wine or Prosecco. The garnish was a um, half of a passion fruit cut side up, floating in a cocktail glass, more vanilla sugar, just to be extra sure, um, sprinkled on the top. And initially you'd serve it with a little spoon and a passion fruit, right? So you had this trifecta of experiences all wrapped up really nicely in this neat little bow that was called a porn star martini. It's delicious. It's fun. It's a bit silly. A huge amount of, of Doug's genius in, in the creation of the porn star martini is the name. Nothing will stop you kind of scrolling through a menu like the word porn star. Guys would come to the bar and say, hey, I'd like four porn stars, please. And Women would come to the bar and go, hey, I'd like a porn star, please. It is brilliant on every level. 
What is not to love about a bright orange drink in a coupette and a little tiny, tiny glass of champagne? There's nothing not to like about that. And I'm sure that is something to do with the legacy of the drink. The fact that the porn star martini exists and it is the drink that it is, is not because of the drink itself, it's because of the man behind it. What Douglas has given our industry is so much more than two bars, a book and a famous cocktail. He proved that determination, hard work, graft, care, pays off. He did it with completely, totally being himself, not conforming not polishing himself to be this person that everyone expected. He did it completely on his own terms. Doug's influence is huge. His work supports hundreds of thousands of bartenders around the world, whether they understand or realize that themselves. You know, to leave a legacy behind, that's kind of, that's what we're all trying to do, right? Thank you, John, Andrea and Hannah. Thank you again, Doug, for inspiring us and pushing us to be the best versions of ourselves. And thank you again for introducing me to my wife, Louisa. Back to you, Janai and Miss Frankie.